Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Jimbo, your host, and today we're gonna be talking legacy brand versus modern brand. So today we're gonna be comparing two different products. We're gonna be applying them, putting them on the panel, and then putting them through the torture test to see which one holds up better. Does the legacy brand hold up or does the more modern brand hold up? And with these two products, there's two very different application methods and that's what is gonna be a common theme when we start comparing legacy brands to modern brands is the application method. So in this video, we're gonna be comparing Colonite 845 versus CarPro Reload. First up, we have the Colonite 845, a tried and true. It says existed since 1936, and the bottle looks like it hasn't changed since, since 1936. This. 16 ounce bottle is gonna put you back $19, at least according at the time of this recording, uh, on amazon.com. It's an insulator wax, it's the last step wax for high gloss and legendary durability, as it claims on the label. It's kinda cool, it's a little bit thicker of a formula, it smells horrible, so make sure you're working in well ventilated areas. You do not wanna smell this stuff, and proper protection is always recommended. So. It says it has a unique combination of Carnuba Shine, um, and it helps uh, it helps protect against future surface corrosion caused by UV salt, brake dust, uh, precipitation, dirt, bugs, and other contaminants. So we're gonna put it through the torture test and see how it holds up. Now the application process of Colonite is much different than the reload. This is a, you got, you're gonna need an applicator, you're gonna need to walk, work in either circular motions or straight line motions depending on your preference. Uh, you're gonna need to let it haze up and then buff off. So between that applying and then actually removing the wax, whatever has an, I guess, flash for lack of a better term, is gonna be about 10 to 15 minutes. So my recommendation is to work a few panels at a time, depending on your temperature, humidity, all those factors. Work a couple panels at a time, apply it, move on to the next panel, apply it, and then maybe move back to that first panel and then remove. Now when you remove it, you may want to also carry with you either a quick detail spray or a waterless wash because this product streaks and kind of becomes finickety if it dries too much. So there is kind of, and depending on your humidity, temperature, where you're working, all those factors, you may actually want to try an initial panel first to kind of get your method down and then work the rest of the car like that. If it's colder, you may be able to work your way around the whole entire car before buffing off and removing. But my little tip is to bring either a waterless wash or a quick detail spray to help remove the product and help with the streaking that happens after. To be honest, not sure if it's worth it. The other end of the spectrum, or the more modern, we have the CarPro Reload. This bottle right here is gonna set you back about $25 at the time of this recording. 25 bucks for CarPro Reload, and we've talked about Reload before and kind of the dangers of it. Um, it doesn't smell as bad as the Cullinite 845, but it does still have a very strong chemically scent, and the warning label will make you not want to use the product. However, the application method is very simple compared to the Cullinite 845. You can simply spray on the panel, wet or dry panel, may I add, Probably go wet if you wanna deal with less streaking or you can dilute the product down if you choose to do so. And then wipe it in. So this is gonna take you know, a spray wax, um, a very, very simple approach. And we've seen in these torture tests and durability tests that the spray technology in general in the detailing industry with the synthetic waxes, silica, call it whatever you wanna call it, have actually been a lot better than the old school you know, elbow grease way of doing things. So it'll be very interesting to see when we get to the torture test, which one holds up better. Before we go to the torture test, 
I want to ask you right now to just scroll down to the comments and leave a comment with which one you think is going to win the torture test. So will it be the Conite 845 or will it be the CarPro Reload? Just pause this video, scroll down, leave a comment before you go into the torture test. I'm really interested to see. Just a fun game. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit that subscribe button on your way down to the comment section so you can get first alerted to videos just like this. All right. On to the torture test. Something called a life, a wife, and three kids. Got in the way of my YouTube channel, how dare them. So these, both these panels have seen four days, or both sides of this panel, have seen four days of shady cloud cover in the garage. Wow, impressive. So the colonite on the right side, or excuse me, on the left side of the screen, doing very well. Reload on the right. Also doing very well. I would actually say that the reload is probably doing a little bit better in the water beating department um, and also has a much easier application. The left side, the colonite, I had to leave it for about 10 or 15 minutes for it to completely haze up. Um, and then it got kind of streaky. So, I mean, I just, I don't quite get it. A very fast blow off. That's probably one of the fastest dries I've seen and we're dealing with a gloomy day here in the coastland. So, hmm, interesting. All right, so pretty, pretty impressive to start. And let's see, what are we gonna hit it with first? You know what, since last time we hit reload with Iron X, let's hit it first with the Eagle One. So this is the cheap iron remover. I finally did a cheap versus expensive video on this. You can check out on my channel. Compared this Eagle One, it's like six bucks. Compared it to um, Iron X. So if you're interested in a cheaper alternative for an iron remover, something that bleeds, you could check that out. So I'm hoping, as we saw in the last test with Reload, it held up to Iron X and they played nice together. So it'll be interesting to see if this Plasti Dip stuff is affects the hydrophobicness of um, that. You might tell us something about those iron removers or a little bit different about those iron removers. All right, let's get this residue off. So both still holding up really well. Actually, the roundness of the beads with the Iron X a little bit took a little bit of a hit. But you can also see, I try to do this the water as even as possible, but if you do that, right, you kind of get a different result. Actually, the colonite does better when you do it like that. I'm just messing around on the fly. So I tried to do it even across so we get a accurate picture. I, I mean, I'm going to say they both held up, right? The I would say the iron or the the uh, reload side the beads changed. As we see on the colonite side, they're still pretty nice and tight and round. Have a few oblong ones, but the reload side if we're splitting hairs and that's what I'm doing. I'm not picking on it. I'm splitting hairs at this point. The roundness of the beads have changed a little bit on the car pro side, which may tell us something about that plasty, what do they call it? The black and plasty coat iron remover. It may be a little bit stronger than the Iron X, but you'll have to check out my cheap versus expensive video on that. And we can also see right there with the blower starting to struggle to get the water off the panel. So even though we saw the nice round beads from the colonite still, it, it's not as fast. The reload side did pretty good on that one. 
All right, let's 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 put some fuel to this fire. We have Optimum Power Clean. Did we deem this the, the protection killer yet? The Optimum Power Clean? I don't know if we did. I think it's done a really good job in destroying some of these chemicals. Okay, look at, look at this right over here. We have, again, that same reaction. <clears throat> not sure <clears throat> really what to call the reaction because I'm not sure if it's it actually breaking down the product or fending off the product. And no one's left me a comment to let me know. Come on, guys. Let me know. I'm gonna leave the control section the same or just untouched. There's really no reason to touch the control section. All right, uh-oh, getting a little bit of light mist here. A little bit of rain. I didn't do the wet towel, huh? I need to do the wet towel. Wow, look at, unless there's a ton of residue on there, unless there's a ton of residue on there, that just completely killed both of them. Totally killed them. Evaporation, still there, but is it any different? It's about the same as the middle. Wow, that, well, before I get myself in trouble talking too soon, let's see what that looks like. Sorry, I forgot to do the wet towel with the iron remover. Um, well, the reload, <clears throat> sheeting faster, I think, but I think it's pretty safe to say they're both dead. Let's dry them off. Those are, I mean, took it, whoa, sorry about that. Took a ginormous beating. They're both sheeting water, but pretty much at the same rate as the control section in the middle. And to be honest, all three of them look pretty identical now. Let's take it one step further just for fun. And you can see that, look it. Remember back to just, oh, I don't know, seven minutes ago, well, about six minutes ago when I would use the blower and the water would just run right off and it was crazy? That's what I'm starting to look at is what is the what is the ability of the water to not evaporate like i've said in the past but get off the panel right because that's really the goal with protection is to have less water on the panel so whether that's in the form of beading or sheeting or whatever it does i don't really care what it does i just want it to get off the panel right i don't want water spots so you can get water off the car by driving it by blowing it a multitude of ways right but if when you're doing those things if it's not coming off this is going to be a mess on the panel and a protected car doesn't do this right so again through these tests i feel grateful because i've been trying my hardest to come up with different ways to measure protection or to see visually see protection sure you could probably get a paint depth gauge meter a gloss meter all those fancy tools but the 99.9 percent .9 of the of the population is not going to have access to those tools or necessarily care to have them most of what our customers or most people are going to be doing is what is called visually looking at the car not relying on tools <clears throat> and let's let me get on a soapbox while I hit it with I think it's gone but let's hit it with purple power just for fun but let me get on my soapbox real quick so Here's the thing, paint depth gauges, great for paint polishing, right? To be safe, for sure. Gloss meters, get out of here. I got my God-given gloss meter. It's called my two eyeballs. Granted, I have contacts now, okay? So my, my gloss meter got a little better. But realistically, if you do a car, <clears throat> You want the customer to come out and use their God-given gloss meters to be wowed by the car, right? You want your customer to come out or, or when you get done with your car, cleaning your car, you want to sit back and go, damn, my car looks shiny. 
damn, my car looks good. You're not gonna put a gloss meter on the car and be like, great, the readings are great today. Yep, my car is glossy because my gloss meter said so. It's freaking ridiculous. Now, I get it, it's fun, it's awesome. Gloss meters are great for reassurance, for measuring the growth on your gloss. Um, but realistically, I like my God-given gloss meter much, much better than any fancy dancy gloss meter that you can buy on Amazon. All right, soapbox off, time to rinse. Okay, well, I think that's even flatter. We see the evaporation rate of the water even slower. I think it's safe to say it's completely gone, but I'm gonna do something real quick just for fun because I gotta compound this. I gotta compound this panel again. So I wanna do something real quick that I think will be kind of fun. So those sealants are dead for sure. <laughs> For sure. Well, so I'm interested. What did you think about this test? Are you gonna go for the Colonite 845? Maybe you just like that old school way of applying it and, and making love to your car. So you're gonna go for the Colonite 845 and save about seven bucks. Are you more new school? Is your car new school? So you feel like it needs new school protection and you're gonna reach for the Car Pro Reload? Or are you gonna reach for a different product altogether? I'd love to hear your thoughts, feelings, emotions, and comments in the comments below. Of course, I'll have all these products linked up in the description below. I hope you'll choose to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you get first alerted for videos like this. And I will catch you guys on the flip side. Thanks for watching. See you.